FlossTube, it's Jen from Jen Stitching Niche, back for my seventh video. Um, thank you for all of the people who've been leaving nice comments and subscribing to my channel. It makes me very happy. Um, very nice of people leaving very nice comments, so I appreciate it. Um, I have quite a bit of variety of things to show today. I do have some progress to share and then a new project that I started and I'm almost finished with um, and also um, plans for next week and then I want to show some finished um, items some things that I finished recently and others that are older finishes I also have a couple of um, responses to other videos that um, I promised I would do in my next video I had taped the video last week and deleted it because it was full of lies I had all these plans of what I was going to do and then I didn't do them so I thought I would start fresh um, but let's just get to kind of what my plans are first I'd like to um, the shirt so this is for this is for you Natasha at Stitcherella she had on her taco cat shirt and I'm like I've got a shirt you would like and this is my Perito shirt I've had this for a while it was a freebie that you could get from sending in UPCs from Fresh Step so my nephew loves this shirt. Every time I wear it, he's like, I want that shirt, but he can't have it. Um, so that's for Natasha, because I think it's cute. And then um, Buckeyed Stitcher, her last video mentioned um, a chart, a book that she got from her local needlework store. She had seen something on the wall and she wanted it. And so they were going to send her the chart. Um, and it was an old book from 1985, and she was like, she was not, I guess, pleased with some of the photos in it or the charts in it. And I actually had that. I can remember buying that with one, probably some of the first money I earned at a craft store I worked at in, when I was in um, a freshman or maybe a sophomore in college. And um, I had a Siamese cat. She was my husband and I. We that was our first baby essentially. He got her for me for a birthday gift right before well about uh, six months before we got married so she was our first baby and so I collected Siamese stuff and um, I, t I mentioned on Nicole's on comment on Nicole's um, video that I stitched something out of there and it was the Siamese cat so this is this hangs in my kitchen for my Siamese cat Felicia though she didn't look like this she looked more like I guess it's the Burmese or the apple head She's got more, had more of a round face, but, you know, I was at 19 and I was just stitching Siamese cats, so this still hangs in my kitchen even though we don't have Felicia anymore. So we got her in 1990, right before we got married. Um, I was a freshman, that was the end of my freshman year, so yes, I got married way too young. Um, freshman year in college, I was in my second biology class, and Dr. Beckett was my biology two instructor and he talked about species names and he mentioned that the domestic cat was Felis Catus and I'm like oh I'm gonna next name my next cat Felicia because you know like the scientific name and so my husband got this Siamese cat and she was named Felicia. Um, I worked with that professor later on when I went back after I finished my graduate degree and went back and was um, on faculty at USM. And I would joke with him all the time. I'm like, you know, I named my cat based on something you said in one of your lectures. And he's like, really? And he's like, how's that cat? I'm like, that cat is no longer with us. But she lived 18 years. So that's not a bad lifespan for a cat, I guess. I mean, she was an interesting cat. She was probably the sweetest cat we ever owned. Um, but in addition to that, I would, like I said, I collected Siamese. Anything that was Siamese, I tried to stitch it. So I stitched this out of a magazine because it had that little cat, Siamese cat. And I don't know which magazine it's in. I'm sorry. It looks like a, what is that, Gail Boosie, maybe? But I love the little bluebird at the bottom, too. So it's a, in one of the cross-stitch magazines in the 90s. And then... This was a series that came out from Better Homes and Garden, and it was Cats, Quilts, and Baskets, which I love cats, I love quilts, and I love baskets. So this is the piece, and it's dusty, I'm sorry, but it's a Siamese cat, and I love this. And I saw it on the back of a magazine, 
and I tried my best to figure out how to get this because I was in Mississippi. We didn't have very many craft stores and I was a poor graduate student at this time so I didn't have a lot of money and so I actually started this by charting it based on looking at the picture and I got through about half of it when my mother found the chart for me and sent it to me and I finished it using that chart so you do what you got to do but I was so glad that she got that chart for me so these are three of the Siamese cat pieces that hang in my kitchen in honor of my first baby, Felicia. I'll have to find a picture. She used to sit and lay in my lap when I would cross stitch and it wasn't the most comfortable. I don't know why she would do that because it wasn't comfortable. But if I find that picture, I'll show it on my next video. Um, we have three cats now. None of them are sweet as Felicia. Um, none of them get to sit, and sit near me or in my lap when I'm stitching because of our little puppy that takes up all of everyone's attention. So um, she's over there in her bed right now sleeping. Um, yes, you're very spoiled. Um, next, I want to answer some questions from previous videos. Um, if there's anyone that I don't answer your question, just email, let me know and I'll try to get to that on the next uh, video. So the first one's from Joy Leftwich. She asked if I framed my own pieces, and I do. I worked at a frame shop when I was in, in school. Uh, I learned a lot about framing from several different really great framers, um, and I just... I look for frames. I do have a really good frame shop near me that will build the frames for me. And so I can do framing fairly cheap. I mean, I pay, I buy the phone core at Hobby Lobby and use the 40% off coupon. Same thing with the straight pins. I have a frame gun that I've had for years. Um, I have a mat cutter, but I don't mat a lot of things. But so, I, yeah, I do most of my framing. Um, thrift store finds are great. When you find those the different odd shape frames, that's perfect. And I actually have a list of odd shapes, odd measurements that I have measured different projects that I want to frame eventually, and I refer to that when I go to different thrift stores. So, um, Lavender Lily Stitches asked um, if I take requests from my, on my Etsy store. Yes, absolutely. If there's anything that you need, just contact me through my Etsy store and I will do my best to find that. So I do have a couple of things to share with you that are new in my Etsy store and some plans thanks to Teresa and her brilliance. Um, I'll share that at the end. And then Rose Heck had mentioned, is that right? Heck, yeah. Had mentioned that she's doing the sampler book, the um, Erica Michaels and Rainbow Gallery 2006, 2007, I think was the series. That she went and downloaded the um, charts and actually contacted the stitching post in um, Nashville and got the copy of the finishing uh, instructions. So good for you, Rose. And she was asking me where I found my conversion chart. And it's actually, I, I don't remember where I found it. I know it was on a website because it wasn't on the Rainbow Gallery. But Rainbow Gallery has one now. So if you go to the Rainbow Gallery, which is rainbowgallery.com, click on the free charts and then the DM, excuse me, the cross stitch it has the different series and then if you look down they'll have conversion charts and those conversion charts they have one from Splendor to DMC or DMC to Splendor which is their um, I believe that's their cotton thread so it's on the Rainbow Gallery page uh, Caroline T asked about Silk Weaver she was not familiar with Silk Weaver and Silk Weaver is a fabric dyer um, it's been around for a while I found Silk Weaver Fabrics back in 2005, 2004. It must have been 2004 before Katrina. You know, Katrina the hurricane is the way people in my area of the country kind of remember. It used to be Camille, which was a hurricane that hit in the 60s. You know, everything happened before Camille, after Camille. For our generation, it's before Katrina, after Katrina. Um, and it hit our area pretty hard. I might show some videos, or not videos, some pictures of our yard after Katrina. It wasn't pretty, but it was a bad storm. So anyway, I'm getting off topic. So Silk Weaver, it is a, um, it's a hand, a hand dyed fabric company. The person that originated or started it is no longer doing that. And they sold it to another company. I think it's, um, I don't remember, Needlework something. 
in New, Jer New Jersey that's dyeing the fabrics now, and so a lot of people are having issues with shipping and things like that. I don't buy silk weaver fabric personally anymore because of the same shipping issues. Uh, it's great fabric if you can get it, um, beautiful colors, and you can just look at, you know, Google silk weaver and it'll take you to that, um, the website where they have the different fabrics. Uh, half stitch cross stitch, so Dina, she left a comment on one of my videos, which was pretty cool. She asked after I, as I was going through the whip parade, were there any product, projects that I miss that I'm like, oh, I'm, now I really want to stitch this. And yes, the Stacy Nash Grace Bridges was one that I love that piece. And I didn't realize how far I had gotten when I put that away. And when I did the whip parade, it was like, oh my goodness. And so actually, whenever I have a free day where one of the projects that I had scheduled at the beginning of the year, because that's the way I do things, um, if I've already finished that and its number comes up, I'll get Grace Bridges out and stitch that because I love that piece. It's a beautiful chart to me. I love it. Um, so thank you, Dina. And Dina, I have to thank you because because of one of your videos, I found out about Katrina Boyd's um, retreats. And now I go to her retreats. I've been to two and I'm going to another one in um, at the end of September. So, and I'll put something below about the link to Katrina's retreat um, page information. So, and then Patricia left a comment about the thumbnail photo in one of my videos, which was a Eastern King bird. And thank you, Patricia. I love birds. I'm not really great at identifying birds though. So I do have a, a former departmental chair He's actually the person that hired me originally that's an ornithologist or a bird person. And so when I take a picture of a bird that I don't know, I send it to him and he tells me what it is. And that picture I was very proud of. I, that was a kingbird, eastern kingbird that was on the, the poles that we've set up for a grape arbor. And it's, I mean, I've got maybe 10 pictures of it and it's just beautiful. Usually I don't get such crystal clear pictures, but... That one was probably one of my favorite pictures. So thank you, Patricia, for commenting on my photo. I hope to get some more pictures soon. I do love to take nature photos. So, so that's my questions. Um, again, if you have any other questions, it is fun answering questions. You know, Coffee Stitcher always says, leave me questions. I love questions. And it is fun to be able to kind of find out what people want to know and provide some information. Um, let me think. I guess what I'll do next is show some of my progress. So I stitch on a project for three days. It's called my three-day focus piece. And then every day I have a whip of the day that I work on. So let me see. There's a little craziness here. Um, I guess this one was a three-day focus and I posted pictures of this on Instagram. So this is Mari. At least that's the way I say it because I have a sister-in-law named Mari. Some people may say Mary. but And when I showed this last time, I had just a tiny bit here and then maybe the darker burgundy cl colors on either side of that middle. And I stitched on this for about two days. I wanted to stitch more, but only got about two days of stitching. And that's my progress. And I think it looks really pretty on this fabric. I was having issues because I thought it was not covering really well. If you look really close, I know, ooh, how do I do that? The coverage isn't that great. But if you hold it back, you can't tell. And that's what counts. Because who is it who says that if they're getting that close to my needlework, that's, they don't need to be. So that's one of my three-day focus pieces. And it goes back into the bins until its, its number gets called or it comes back up in the rotation, which would be next year probably. So where am I going to put these? I got every surface covered over here. Okay, and the other piece that was a three-day focus, I'm actually holding, but I can't find the original. Oh, here it is. So this is the Stacy Nash Primitives Martha Agnes Sampler Roll. And when I last showed you, I just had the outline of this box not complete. About 
maybe two thirds of it. And I stitched on this for three days, two days, three days. Stitched on it last night while watching the latest um, episode of, I was going to say Crown of Thorns, Game of Thrones. Crown of Thorns is a type of starfish or sea star. Anyway, so this is my progress. And the colors are not what I expected. So those are pretty colors. This is on 32 count pecan pie from Silk Weaver, actually. I bought this from Teresa when she had it. That's the one she's looking for, and I have it here. Oh, well. But it's not what I was looking I thought these were going to be more blues and grays, but it's grays and the red is cinder from Gentle Arts. But I love that flower. So pretty. And then this little piece here is really pretty. So I had fun stitching on that one. I'll enjoy getting back to that one when it comes back up. There it is. I try not to put my threads back into these. I try to keep them all together so that I can use them. My hair's driving me nuts. I'm trying, I've gained weight this summer and I'm noticing it on these videos. That's probably why I'm having such a hard time with the videos. So I gotta start walking again. Anyway, different topic. So that is the two that I stitched on as whips, I meant on three day focus. So the other things that I worked on, not necessarily in order, uh, are things that I just worked on on a day, for a day. And I worked on, Another one of the Bewitching Pixies. This is Gigi, which I love her. I think she is beautiful. And I got quite a bit in. So this is Gingerbread. Picture this plus Gingerbread. And that's my progress. And I actually ran out of black. And this is me. I'm crazy about things. I took a picture the beginning of the year, I took a picture of my DMC floss collection. <laughs> I'm oversharing. But anyway, I took a picture of my DMC floss collection. And I told my husband, I said, at the end of the year, I'm going to look at this and see how much thread I've used. So I don't want to buy any thread. I've got so many things that I can stitch on that when I run out of something, I don't want to go and get more thread. I just switch to a different color or a different project. Now... If I'm close to finishing something, I'll call my sister and ask her to bring me some DMC. So, because she lives about a mile from me, I'm weird that way. And I'm focused too. I am stay focused on my little, uh, what do you call it, goals for the year. Okay, I'm sorry. This is getting out of its package. Another thing that I've stitched on for just a maybe an hour. I think I've stitched on this and watched one video is Hillside Sheep Needle Book from Chessie and Me. So I'm almost finished with the front piece with all the sheep. I just have to put that B skip and then now I'm working on the back with the alphabet. And the only progress that I got so I had all this done the last time I showed you. I finished the middle here and then just that little bit there. And this is, this is supposed to be, let me think. The fabric that it calls for is 32 count vintage Sienna Night from Lin uh, Lakeside Linens. This may be it. I think that is it. I think I did get the called for fabric. Or at least it's close to it. So I, that's my progress on that one. Not much. Um, it was a stressful week. I'm trying to get, I finished up the semester. Summer's over. But that means that I have two weeks to get ready for the next semester. And they're making all these changes. And I'm teaching a new class. And I'm stressed a little bit. But I made it through it. So, And then last night, this was the, the, um, what you call it, whip of the day. So I stitched on this a little bit, just a teeny tiny bit. This is Olga's Tart, and all that I did was I finished the outline of this moon, 
finished this little guy, girl's tail, and then I started on the pumpkin. And then it was too late in the night, and I had to put it away and go to bed. So it will come up in my three-day. I'm at my three-day focus piece soon because I'm in the M's, N's, and O's. I'm almost there. And then the last piece. This is where I lied to you. I told you on my video that I love this and I was going to finish it. This was the Wee Beasties. Oops. Is it, it's so pretty. And someone asked if that's metallic thread, the white and the pink, and that's not. That is DMC floss. It's just blended and just, uh, what's his name? Terrence Nolan was amazing in charting these things. So I went and bought the, you do have to use the, Ooh. Ooh, it's getting stuck in there. So I did go and get this silky, what is this, the satin floss. I know everybody's like, no, don't use that. But, you know, it'll be fine. And then I didn't stitch on it because instead of doing that, I spent an afternoon after a rough day at work, came back home and came up here in my craft room, and actually that's the day I recorded and I decided that since I was sitting here looking at over here I have a bookshelf that has a bunch of magazines in it I decided I was going to um, look at some magazines and those magazines include the primitive needle and let's see punch needle and primitive stitches stitcher hold on I'm sorry this magazine so I was looking through it and I you know every issue i've got all issues now and i want to stitch everything i want to do everything in these books i think maybe not everything but most everything and i came across this i'm like oh, that is such, that's a pin so i decided i was going to do that so i went the next day to look for weaver's cloth and they have a punch needle cloth at hobby lobby but it's not weaver's cloth and I happened to run into my friend Lisha at Hobby Lobby because she was there doing something. And she said, just use muslin. I'm like, okay. I came home. I have three yards of muslin that my mother gave me. I'm like, all right, I'll use that. There's a free project. So I, the reason I wanted to do this, honestly, is I got this after listening to Primitive Stitcher talk about this little lap stand. I don't use a hoop, but I thought this would be great to use for punch needle. So I found a punch needle project and I drew these out and they're tiny. Look at them. That's four of them. And I punched the two sheep and I'm almost finished with this. And I'm just using threads from my stash. Um, a lot of it is the variations, DMC variations. And um, actually I used up a whole skein to do that and these two sheep. But um let me see if I can take this off and show you what it looks like from the other side. This is a really cool little lap stand. If you want to find out more, it's um, Primitive Stitcher. Um, Suzette talks about it in one of her videos. But here's the progress. Aren't they cute? So right now these don't look that great because I have to fill in around them. But these guys look good. So I just need to finish them. Michelle Rudy, I know you're it's goats, not sheep, but those are cute. You should do those. Okay. So that's my distraction that made me a liar on my last video that I deleted. Because I didn't do any cross-stitching. For I spent the next evening working on these instead of cross-stitching. So that's a project. And I'll get back to that pretty quickly. Okay. So that is kind of what I did last week. Um, if I look at some of my finishes, oops, what am I doing? I got a chart here that's out of its home. Let me put it away. Um, I do have a finish. So one of the projects I worked on last week was Majora's Mask from Nerd Pillow on Etsy store. I think it's Etsy. But um, my son is a major Zelda fan, so I found this and I stitched it for him. 
he loves it. He asked me the other day, this is for my older son, Patrick, when I'm going to finish, when can he hang it up in his room? So I went and bought this little wooden frame. I'm going to just paint it black and just kind of finish it like so many of you have shared, which is a brilliant idea. And then he can hang that in his room. But it was a different stitch. But it was fun. I enjoyed it. Each one of those little horn things down here is three different colors of thread. But that's okay. It was fun. So that's a finish. And what am I going to share next? Oh, I was going to show you what my next week's plans are. So what am I going to do next week? Um, I have a little day planner that I have everything scheduled for the year. And then I just transfer it to my little notebook that I work on while I'm stitching. So every day I have something that I'm going to be working on. And then there's a couple of days that I don't have anything or it's a repeat because the random number generator did it that way. So this week's three-day um, focus includes Noel from With Thy Needle and Thread. And I'm just going to show you what I'm going to stitch on and then progress. I mean, there's not much progress. I just have that portion of the end done. But I'll stitch on that starting today. And then the next three-day focus will be um, Nene's tape measure. This is that from Old Colonial Designs. And I have some progress, but not that much. So I have the little band, and I just need to start working on the faces. Um, Mama Joan from Queen of Quite a Lot, thank you so much. She actually, on the video with Teresa and I did together, we mentioned things that, you know, something that got away. She actually sent me a message telling me that she was at a shop that had what I had missed. And um, I didn't contact them fast enough. And actually, Teresa contacted them for me, and they sold out. So it still got away. But that's okay. I really appreciate it, though. That was very sweet of you, Joan, to, to let me know that information. I'm telling you, that's one of the nicest things about Floss Tube is that it your community increases greatly. So thank you, thank you. Uh, and then my last one is another one of those bewitching pixies, and this is Minerva. So I took her to the retreat that I went to in June. You know, we kept calling her Mag uh, Professor McGonagall, Minerva McGonagall. So this is what my progress is. So hopefully when I make my video next week, you'll see a lot of progress because I do not have to work like a crazy woman this weekend. I, I'm going to share some of my 20 random facts about me, and when I do that, I'll explain why I worked all day, Saturday and Sunday, and I'll explain why I had to do that when I get to my 20, 20 random facts. But I'm not doing, going to do 20. I'm going to just do a few. All right, so um, whip of the day some of the things I'm going to be working on, Be Merry from AB Designs. And I'm actually going to stitch on this for about an hour tonight. That's my progress, if you recall from my whip parade. So hopefully we'll see some. Maybe I'll work on Santa's face because that's kind of creeping me out that he doesn't have a face. Okay. And another thing that I'm going to work on is the Cottage of the Month. And I think I'm going to work on, let's see, I'll work on May. So I'll just work on that for one day. And I've got that much done, which to me is the hardest part. Once I get the base of the house done, everything else goes pretty quickly. I would love to get to those birdhouses and that bee scat. Cute. Okay, so that's my goal. I'm going to work on May. And then another project that I will be working on this week oops, is another small one. This is Summer Splendor, and I think I can finish this one. I'm halfway done. It's a small piece. I can do that, ladies and gentlemen. Don't y'all think so? I can get this done. That's my goal. I may not stitch very much on my 
three-day focus piece that day, but I think I'm going to finish that one. Even if I have to stay up, I'm going to finish that one because I need some finishes. And then I've got two other ones that are still available for my, from my schedule that I made up a while ago. Three tulips from Brenda Gervais. And I have about a quarter of this one done. That not that beautiful? I love these colors on this fabric. I think that is beautiful. And that's, I love this. Okay, Dina, here's another one that every time I see it, I'm like, oh, I need to finish that one. Beautiful, beautiful. And then the last one that is a whip of the day, just going to spend a little bit of time on, is Ink Circles Get Cracking. And this is on 36 Count Murky from Picture This Plus. And I've got almost a quarter of it done. So, pretty, pretty. So that's what I'm going to be working on this week. The other thing... I have to go to work tomorrow. I have to meet with one of the deans for a class that I'm teaching. That's freaking me out. It's an honors class and it's not a, you know, I'm a scientist. So we teach content. I do spend a lot of time teaching learning. I know it's college, but I teach a lot of freshmen. So I have to teach them different ways to pay attention, the way things are written. You know, these are cues that tell you something important is coming up. So I kind of, I teach a lot of freshmen, so I do a lot of that. A lot of people are like, you shouldn't spend so much time doing that. But the kids need it. So I want them to be successful. I want them to figure this out early, and that way they do well in the rest of their classes. Um, but this class that I'm about to teach is different than any class I've taken. I've, I mean, I've taught. I've taken classes like this, and I love them. It's an honors class. But I'm a little bit worried about it. I did my syllabus yesterday. I mean, this afternoon, and I was really excited about it and shared it with my colleagues. I haven't gotten any feedback, um, but I'm meeting with the dean to kind of discuss some some things about it and make sure we're all on the same page. I don't know that has nothing to do with cross-stitching. I'm sorry. I'm babbling because it's right there on my mind. My husband's sick of me talking about it, too, so sorry. Um, what was I going to tell you? Oh, so... Wednesday, I'm going down to the Gulf Coast of Mississippi with my son because we love to go thrift store shopping. So that's another thing I love about all of you. I'm a thrift store shopper. My son is too. We both have always been. My younger, a younger son hates it. But my older son, he goes his way, I go my way, and when we'll meet up after about 30 minutes. And we usually don't spend very much, but we just love looking at other people's donations. So that's what we're doing we try to go once every six months down to the Gulf Coast because they have some really good thrift stores. And so we're going to do that. Um, we aren't going on our trip that we were planning on going to the world's longest garage sale that starts in Gadsden, Alabama. I'm so sad. But it's just, it's not going to happen. So we'll do that next year maybe. Um, but then Thursday and Friday of this week, I'm not going to do anything but craft. I'm going to, my older son uses this craft room. I know I've said that before. His goal is to clean up his mess for me so I can have my table. And I'm going to sew and I'm going to finish things and I'm going to just relax and not think about biology for two days. Don't let anybody up in my department know. They'll find something for me to do. But I'm going to I need a little bit of a break, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to see if Teresa can come over to maybe Friday afternoon. Maybe we'll do another stitching uh, slumber part party. If we do, we'll do a video. Um, but that's what I'm going to do. So um, I don't know what I was, what point I was getting to. Anyway, I'm going to do a lot of stitching. I should get some finishes done. Um, I'm sorry, I'm a little rambly, aren't I? I guess I need to focus. So what I'll focus on next are some of my finishes that I have not framed. So I have this chest that my mother gave me as a Christmas present. It had 
She got it probably at a department store, and when you opened it up, it had, like, bath soaps and things like that. And I use it as a storage for all of the various projects oops, that I've finished and haven't fully finished. And people, I got a lot of them. Lots and lots and lots and lots. So this is going to take several videos to go through Jennifer's ridiculous number of cross-stitch projects. Because i that's what I do when I'm not working. When I sit and watch TV, I have to have something in my hands and I cross-stitch. And I didn't realize how much I had cross-stitched until I started looking at this. And Teresa's is always like, you got a lot of finishes. You need to do something with these. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show them to you. And eventually I'll finish them. So I've got, some of these are old. Some of these I know where they came from. Some of them I don't. Um, I will share as much information as I can with you. Um, and if there's anything that you just desperately need to know more about, just ask and I will find out what I can. So um, I've got a stack here. So this is the number we're going to go through. And just show you some of the things I've finished over the years. So the first one is actually one of Teresa's designs. This is Halloween Alphabet. From Raise the Roof and she released these as kits I believe I think it came with the fabric in the chart and then you just you provided the thread I think I have two or three of those kits in my stack in my um, shop downstairs and I think that I may have just the chart so if you're interested in this just let me know I don't think I've got it listed but I can list that and this is picture this plus fabric I don't remember which one but I love the purple she had green orange and purple and I got the purple because that's one of my favorite colors. So that cat is too cute. Look at that. So sweet. I like Lizzie Kate. So I have several Lizzie Kates. This is Hocus Pocus. I actually borrowed this from Teresa. And that's on a silk weaver fabric. It's probably a solo die that I got back in the day. And then I've got... Um, this is the Halloween alphabet from Lizzie Kate. She did a, several of these um, holiday alphabets that came with a little charm, a little ghost charm. And I love these. I love series. If it's like, you've got to have these five, then i got to have those five. We actually, yesterday, were at, we were all sitting around my mom's dining room table talking about things we did as kids when we were back in the 80s early 80s my parents took us all to the Disney World and you get the little pamphlet that's got all the rides and that's just a checklist for Jennifer and I was checking them off as we wrote them and the last day I had like three things we had to do and we did one and we were all doing them go into the second ride and when we got off that I'm like okay let's go to the third ride and my mom's like oh your dad's already taking your little sister over there so we're just not going to worry about that what I can't finish my list and she's like no it's it's too late we need to go so I didn't get to write that right it still bugs me today my sister's like Jennifer you need to get over it I can't it was Mr. Toad's Wild Ride and the next time I went back they didn't have Mr. Toad's Wild Ride they had Winnie the Pooh's ride do y'all see the tears in my eyes that it still bugs me I didn't get to write that so oh, anyway this is like a therapy session for me today. This is a sand, um, what is it? Sandman original. My son, when he, the younger son, Nicholas, actually picked this out when he was probably seven. He's like, I need you to stitch that. So I stitched it and I'm like, okay, Nicholas, what do I'm going to do with this? He's like, I don't know. I don't want that. I was like, okay. And then this is another one of the Lizzie Kate holiday alphabets and there's the little acorn charm and this one I don't know what this is from it's so cute though it was a kid it came with the threads and the pumpkin and I just love that I'm gonna finish this on as a box top I've got the box I got everything I just need to that's one of the things I'll do this weekend let's finish that and then this one I have no idea what this is. Apparently, there's supposed to be a spider right there. So I've got some spider buttons I'll put on there. But, I mean, I like the colors, and I love alphabets, but I have no idea who the designer is or anything. 
This is another Lizzie Kate. I think this is a freebie maybe. And I was this is back when I was a little cheaper. I didn't have the buttons, so I just used some of my scrapbook buttons. It doesn't show up very well on that fabric. This is a Blackbird Designs, I believe, from one of the Halloween Just Cross Stitch books. And this is the work basket. This is Quaker Halloweens. The, there was a bat and an owl. And this is one of my silk weaver fabrics. I don't know the name, but I used the call for um, silk on this one. I thought it was really pretty. I think that is, let me think. I think it's Havana, because it's not what you would think. Loriana Havana, maybe? But it's really pretty. It's the name of the, the silk thread. And then this one is actually from a magazine. This is from For the Love of Cross Stitch. I think it's 94, 95. There were three of them in three different issues. So there's the Santa Claus, the Scarecrow, and the Witch. So I stitched this one. And I have the other patterns, and I'm going to stitch them. I got the same fabric. It's just, you know, there's just not enough hours in the day or days in the year. Here's a Little House Needleworks. This is Two White Houses. She did a series where she would do these different houses. I know I've got two blue houses, I think, two red houses. And I just love the colors. Sunflower, and I love that border down here. And I love the crows. So pretty. And I like these trees that she does. That's one of my favorites. This is a prairie schooler. Knock, knock. So super cute. Here's another one of those Lizzie Kate alphabets. This is the Easter. Oops. All right, here is a blackbird design. This is one of those rewards of merit. I think this is Easter basket. I can't remember which one, but I think I have this in my Etsy store. But a good one for Easter. Now this is Turnicoton. I think that's who this is, Turnicoton. And um, this is fresh strawberries. I believe is what the name translates to. It's in French. But if you, if you haven't seen these, they have all these little specialty stitches, and it is in Fran French, in France, in French, but they're not that hard to figure out what they are. Plus, you can Google it. But I just love that little black kitten, those strawberries. So sweet. Here's another one of hers. This one is the Lady in the Blue House, I think is what it translates to. I love those little yellow flowers. Forget what that stitch is called. And those sheep are so cute. Look at that woman's hair. She is fancy. Sweet, sweet. All right, here's another series out of a magazine, and it's probably just Cross Stitch Magazine. I don't remember the issue, but it's these little bunnies. I like bunnies. Michelle, I love bunnies. My husband still says no. And yes, this is stitched a while back when I didn't pay attention to carrying those threads. It's all good. And then here's the summer bunny. I stitched this later when my attention to detail was a little better. But So I've got the other two. I'll finish those one day. And then this is a little house needlework. It's called Bird Alphabet. And it came with um, Belsois green silk, I believe. But I like the blue. I thought that would be prettier. And it came with the buttons as well. This is another Blackbird design, I believe. This is out of one of the Christmas ornament issues. And then some more Lizzie Kate. So Lizzie Kate, let's see, Teresa did a series where designers kind of 
worked with her. They did this whole kind of collaboration where they came up with little young girl stitchers that had garden names. So, you know, Teresa's is Jeannie Bean is her little stitcher, made up stitcher girl. And so other designers did something similar. And Lizzie Kate came up with, I can't remember the girl's first name, but it's something McSampler. And so she did a, several of these. So this was the farm one. And I just think that's so cute. The rooster and the sheep and the bee, oh, that's all so cute. I need to finish that as a just a little pillow. And then she did this one as well. This is another one of those McSampler little kitten over here. And then another Lizzie Kate. I stitch a lot of Lizzie Kate, or I did. This is the garden sampler, maybe, or plant sow garden. Okay, let's see. All right, this one has a funny story. So this is either Carriage House Sampling or Kathy Barrett, Elizabeth Scholl. And it is Elizabeth Scholl. And then it has like six more, six or seven more rows of these that goes all the way across. But can you see what I did? I turned my fabric the wrong way. So it should have been stitched this way, but I ran out of room. So I just stopped and I said, there, that's enough. I have a cat named Elizabeth. This can be her little pillow. So it is what it is. Oh goodness, there's so much more to show. Here's another Blackbird design. This is an older one. I don't know the name. I stitched it on this thinner fabric. So I'm going to have to frame it in, um, using a darker like mat board to stretch it on. But I love the colors. It's pretty, pretty. But I don't remember the name. I'm sorry. Country Cottage Needleworks B Sampler. I love this fabric, but it probably wasn't the best choice for this because the alphabet doesn't show up. But I think everything else looks pretty. Paula Vaughn. I think this is either spring remembered or something like that. Those irises are beautiful. Another country cottage needlework. This is the daisy sampler. Here's one that I finished not too long ago. This is Sam Sarah Witch's Hat. I love this one. And all those details in that, each band of that hat. So pretty. And this is stitched on 30 count kudzu. That's the way we say it in the South, kudzu. Um, from Wheat Star Works. Teresa says kudzu. I'm like, in the south, it's kudzu. At least in Mississippi. Um, this is not, well, here, I'll wait and hold, show those in just a minute. These are not mine. This is uh, one of Teresa's Happy Camper. And there's supposed to be a little face. So a button from just another button company, just a face goes right there. But I should put a a question mark there say happy camper where is the camper be a what is that Blair Witch project and then here's some more bunnies this was out of a magazine and all of the white is the fabric it's just the gray and the pink that I stitch but isn't that cute I need to finish that that is so turn that into something and then another bunny this is Mosey and me So that's some of my finishes. These two are actually my mom's. She started them and my older sister finished them. So they're in my stack to frame. So this is Hip Hop from Bent Creek. So my mom started us in crafting. She was a crafter, cross stitch, all kinds of stuff. But the past few years, she's lost a lot of her vision. She can still see, not as well as she thinks she can, but she can still see, but she can't cross stitch. So. My sister pulled out all of these projects my mom had started, her whips, and kind of distributed them amongst the girls. And I've finished the um, Red Hat Society. I think that's what it is. It's this long kind of sampler, bunch of words. It's a poem. 
and then my sister finished this one for her that I'm supposed to frame and then finish this one which I don't know is that Gail Boosie as well but I don't know it probably came out of a magazine because my mom didn't buy a lot of patterns but she had a lot of magazines all right so that's my finish parade and I've got lots more to show and that'll be on a different video so we're at almost 50 minutes so let me think there's a couple things I want to share about that's in my shop um, oh that's not good gotta pause it I just knocked over okay sorry I went to get something to show you and I kicked my glass and it rolled all the way underneath the bed that you're sitting on and it was just you know it's been the week okay so the couple of things I want to show from my shop so um, I love being able to order things I mean my I tell my husband my motto from my shop I am borrowing from Bluebell ice cream I know they've got some issues but their motto is hilarious it's you know we eat what we can and we sell the rest my motto is I stitch what I want and I sell the rest so you know um, when I see some good deals I try to share those so one of the things that I was able to order from Norden Craft um, are some older Chessie Me kits so this is Blackbird House and it comes with the fabric and like eight weeks dye works um, cotton threads the price is like 15 bucks so I mean you're gonna pay 20 bucks for those threads and so you get the threads the chart and the even comes with a needle and that linen so this is northern what is the name northern northern cross linen tea so I mean if you're interested if, you, if you're not any if you're only interested in getting some really good deals on some weak style works those are some colors and they're like cinnabar honeysuckle Lancaster red light khaki London fog you know so it's common um, threads that you see in other charts and the other thing I want to share is this little guy here so one of the things that came in all the stock that I bought from Teresa was a group of these little feather trees that are from Lizzie Kate designs I guess because you know if you'll look at some of her charts they will have little ornaments hanging on these little trees I have like 20 of these I'm gonna list them in my Etsy store and I think I'm gonna put them up for seven dollars because the shipping's gonna be a little steep on these because they're you know it's got a wooden base I mean it's not ex super expensive probably it's gonna probably be about I don't know it depends but I just need some room in my storage closet so I'm gonna put these up for seven dollars so if you're interested in them again they're just very simple they're the Lizzie Kate ornaments are often shown displayed on her the cover of her charts um, so if you're interested just check out my Etsy store Jen Stitching Niche and I'll try to get these up well I'll get them oh, they'll be posted by the time this video is posted so and then the last thing I want to do is a couple of shout outs I want to well not necessarily shout outs but thank you for shout outs because these people are well known um, Schoolhouse Stitcher if you have not watched her videos go watch her videos but be prepared you may not you may be staying up late at night checking out eBay because she's found some really great charts and after watching her last video I promise I woke up at 3 o'clock in the morning and I checked eBay to see if there were any great deals I didn't find any great deals but she is um, an amazing stitcher and stitches a lot of the same things I do um, mischievous stitches love Lori she has some amazing things hanging on her wall um, Yvonne from um, Night Owl Stitcher. I love to watch her videos. Um, just so there's lots of different individuals and different people that I've been watching lately. Um, Ingeborg, I stitched too far. She was um, talking about something and she's like, and I stitched one too far. I'm like, like your name of your channel. But um, I like to watch her videos. She's very talented. And then Sylvia um, from Becca's Land. Her videos are so calming I just love to watch her videos. so first of all her environment that she's videotapes in is just so serene and she has such a calm voice I love to watch her videos as well plus all of her finishes are amazing they're so meticulous so um, if you haven't watched Sylvia you should go look at 
some other things that she has. So, so those are a few shout outs. Um, I guess the last thing I was going to do is share the 20 random facts, but I'm not going to do 20 because I'm already at an hour. So I'll share some facts or random things that I haven't already shared. Um, let's see. My major was marine biology and I did take scuba in when I was in college. So I, I only, the only time I ever went scuba diving was while I was in that scuba class. I've never been scuba diving again, but, um, we had a really tough scuba instructor. Everybody said he was a former Marine. He wasn't. He was just a jerk, really. Honestly, he was just a jerk. But um, I made it through it because the one thing that, you know, I'm very nervous, but I don't get intimidated by jerky people, I guess. Um, so I have been scuba diving. When my last scuba trip we went on, I actually got tangled in the anchor line of a boat and was pulled up underneath the boat and fortunately my partner came back to help me but I didn't get too nervous because I figured you know it's pretty obvious that I would was in distress and somebody would come help me um let's see another random fact let's see I used to drive a tractor a lot when I was a kid I was the tractor driver when it was time to um, pick up the hay in the field. Um, I tried to go bird hunting when I was younger because, you know, I was, lived on a farm and I was Tom girl, but I couldn't stand the idea. So I would scream at the birds and make them fly away so my brothers couldn't shoot them. So I didn't get to go hunting very much after that. Um, one of the facts I was going to share that the reason I've been really busy is I teach anatomy and physiology I run my Etsy store. I'm also an author on two anatomy and physiology textbooks. Um, I work with two other um, authors. They're amazing. I love my co-authors. We work very well together. I have a great editorial team. Love my editorial team. But it can be a lot, very stressful getting the inertia, getting it started. So we're in the next round of revisions of one of the textbooks. We just finished the revisions of one, and we're now ramping up the revisions of the other one. And I spent the last week and a half working on one chapter and did a marathon writing questions and revising certain areas and looking up and verifying and all of this stuff. So that's one of the things I do. I love it. I really, I mean, I worked really hard this weekend. I think I put in 12 hours on Saturday and I put in another eight hours on Sunday. Plus all the other time before that and what I spent on it today. But I was happy. I mean, I love doing it. It's a lot of work, but it's rewarding work for me. So that's another random fact about me. Um, I'd rather drive a truck than a car any day. I love to drive a truck across the field. It's the country girl in me, I guess. So my husband and I bought a new truck for the farm, and I'm co constantly coming up with reasons why I need to drive it, and he needs to drive the smaller vehicle. So I got the truck this weekend. I mean, this whole week, so I love to drive a truck. I collect La La Loopsies, if you haven't noticed. These little dolls here are La La Loopsies. And I love them. I never played with dolls as a child. I have one doll that my mother gave me when I was um, a baby. And when she realized I didn't play with it, she didn't buy me any more dolls. I was a tomboy, so I liked stuffed animals. Um, but about eight years ago, I guess, the La La Loopsies came out. And I just loved their little button eyes. So I started collecting them and went a little, a little crazy. And I have a lot of them. And I'll just leave it at that. Um, I have a lot of them, but their button eyes make me happy. And I'll share one more stuffed animal story with you, and I'll leave you with this. And this will make a lot of you laugh. I don't think I've talked about this before. So let me get it. So, y'all know who this is? This is Lotso Bear. So, I love Disney World, and my husband and kids and I went to Disney. And we were discussing what we were going to do, and 
my husband and I didn't agree on what we were going to do. So we're like, I'm like, look, you just go your way. I'll go my way and we'll meet up for dinner. But we just need to kind of do something different. So when we met up for dinner, he handed me a bag and he said, I got you something. And I didn't look in this. And so you're already, you're going to know the ridiculousness of this as I tell the story. But he said, I, I went to a store and I was walking around and I saw something. And when I saw its eyes, it reminded me of you. <laughs> and I pulled this out. And I said, Hobby, he's the villain. And he's like, oh, I didn't know that. So that's what my husband thinks of me, that my eyes look like the bad guys. So a few years later, my sister and I were at Disney World, and he was out for Halloween. It was a Halloween. He doesn't, I guess he doesn't come out very much, but he was out, and I had to get in line to get my picture made. I said, my husband thinks that you and I look alike. So I had my picture made with lots of hair. But yeah, my husband thought this reminded him of me. Gotta love him. So, all right, with that, I'm going to end it because that probably you're laughing and you probably need to get some, just some air or something. So this was a rambly video. It's a little not, it's not like me normally to ramble quite like this, but I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next week.